Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Holiday Ham Pot Pie. That's right, whether you do this as your main course or as a way to use up some of that leftover holiday ham, this pot pie might be the best pot pie. Sorry, chicken, but I think it's true. And what we'll do to get started is add some onion, celery, and carrot to some butter we melted in a pan over medium-high heat. And of course, we'll also add a nice big pinch of salt. And what we'll do is cook this stirring for just a couple minutes until the onions go from bright white to sort of translucent. And once those veggies have softened and sweetened up a little bit, we will stop and toss in some all-purpose flour. And we will stir that in to form what we call in the business a roux, R-O-U-X, which is actually what's going to thicken our pot pie filling up. And once that's been mixed in, we will cook this stirring for a few more minutes or until that flour just starts to barely turn golden brown. And we want to be careful because if it goes too far, it might get bitter. So we're going to want to pay attention at this point and we don't want to cook it any further than this, which yes, is a shade darker than golden brown. So I'm kind of pushing it here, but it was fine. And once it does get to this point, we will quickly but carefully pour in some chicken broth and we'll stir everything with a spoon until the mixture thickens up which by the way is gonna happen surprisingly quick. So in just a few seconds, it's gonna go from this to something that looks like this, which is exactly what we want to have happen. And because our roux was hot and our broth was cold, we will have no lumps. And then once that's set, we can add the rest of our filling ingredients, which will include a splash of cream, plus of course our holiday ham, which I've cubed up, which again is either from leftovers or ham you bought for this purpose. And yes, of course, this will also work with leftover turkey or beef or pork or whatever. And that's it. We'll finish up with a little bit of minced rosemary, as well as some freshly ground black pepper, and maybe a few shakes of cayenne just to stay in shape. And what we'll do is stir all that together and then evaluate. Since I like to simmer this mixture for about 10 minutes, but we don't want it getting too thick, so I will usually stir in a splash of cold fresh water at this point which we can adjust with at any time, but I'm gonna go ahead and stir in a little bit here. And then once we do see this start to simmer, we can reduce our heat to medium low. And like I said, we'll cook this for about 10 minutes, stirring occasionally, at which point if everything goes according to plan, it should look something like this. And then if we want, and I almost always do, we can stir in some frozen peas at this point, which are fairly classic in pot pies, but of course their inclusion is up to you. I mean, you guys are after all the Tommy tunes of whether to add lagoons, but I think they look and taste nice, so I do. And that's it. Other than maybe tasting this for seasoning, our filling is pretty much done. And what we'll do is let it cool down and then cover it and pop it in the fridge until we need it. And that's it. Once our filling is chilling, we can move on to make a little something called a hot water crust, which starts by blending some salt into some all-purpose flour, and once we have that stirred in, we'll go ahead and make a well in the middle, into which we're going to pour our hot water mixture, which is nothing more than a whole bunch of butter that we bring to a simmer with some cold, fresh water. And we'll do that over medium-high heat. Oh, and don't go anywhere, because as soon as that water starts to simmer and that butter's just about melted, we will give it a swirl and turn off the heat, because by the time we pull this off the stove and pour it into our flour, that butter's going to be completely melted and once we carefully pour that in, we will stir this with a spoon until it sort of clumps up and comes together like this. And as soon as that happens and it's cool enough to touch, and be careful, it might still be too hot. But once it has cooled down a little bit and we're not going to burn ourselves, we will press everything together with our hands and then transfer everything to our work surface. And we'll continue pressing, kneading, and squeezing until we've compressed everything into a relatively round disc of dough. And once that's been accomplished, we'll go ahead and flour both sides, at which point we'll grab our rolling pin and we'll roll this out until our dough is somewhere between an eighth and a quarter inch thick. And by the way, if you've never had any luck making beautiful flaky pie crust, then this is the recipe for you. Since this basically has the opposite texture, okay, a hot water crust is supposed to be sturdy and indestructible. Since it's traditionally used for meat pies that were quite often eaten by hand, so the crust in that scenario was really more of an edible napkin, simply used to get that meat filling up into your mouth. 
But having said that, sturdy does not mean tough. And due to the high butter content, we are still going to get something relatively tender and pleasant to eat. It is just not going to be delicate and dry and flaky like a classic pie crust. And we'll go into the texture more later. But I did want to mention, since yes, we're doing everything wrong, except here wrong is actually right. But anyway, like I said, we'll go ahead and roll that out into something sort of resembling a circle. And once we have that to the thickness we want, we'll go ahead and cut this into quarters, which I should always use the pizza wheel for instead of the bench scraper, since I usually don't even get it close. But you know what? It's really not going to matter, as you'll see. And this recipe is probably going to make some extra dough, so don't stress. And then what we'll do is take the three pieces we're not going to work with right now, and we'll transfer those onto a plate, and then we can cover that with some plastic wrap or foil or a towel. Since this dough is definitely easier to work with if it's at room temp or slightly warm. And then we'll take the piece we're working with, and using just enough flour so it doesn't stick, we'll go ahead and roll this out a little more. And yes, it did stick a little bit to the counter, but that's fine. Did I mention this dough is indestructible? And then once we have that rolled out just about to an eighth of an inch, we will take a round cutter, which ideally is just slightly larger than the size ramekin we're going to use for these. And if you don't have one, just simply trace with the ramekin you're going to use, and then just cut around with a knife. And what we'll do is set that aside for now, and we will gather up the rest of the dough, and we will press and squeeze that back into a ball, and then using flour as needed, we'll roll this piece of dough out until we've reached the desired thickness, which again for me is somewhere between an eighth of an inch and a quarter inch. Okay, these hot water pastry crusts are generally a little bit thicker than a pie crust, but of course that's up to you. And then what we'll do once we're happy with that is pick it up and we will place that in our ramekin and we'll make sure that's pressed against the bottom and then eventually pressed up the sides to achieve as even a thickness as possible. And besides trying to maintain an even thickness, one key thing here is to make sure you have enough dough to go up and over the edge of the ramekin. All right, otherwise the piece we put on top is not gonna seal properly, which could cause some catastrophic gravy leakage, which is the last thing we need. And then once that's set, we'll grab the piece we cut and we'll give that a little bit of a roll to make sure it's big enough to cover the top. And then we'll go ahead and place our ramekin on a foil line sheet pan. And we'll go ahead and fill it up with our now cooled, significantly thicker filling. And there are two ways you can do this. You can fill this up leaving about a half inch of space at the top. So that when these bake the sauce doesn't bubble up and out. Or you can fill it all the way to the top and then some. Knowing the sauce is definitely going to bubble out of the top. But we don't care because we're going to get extra filling. And you know me, that is definitely the system I'm using. But either way, once that's been transferred in, we'll take an egg wash, which is simply an egg beaten with a teaspoon of water, and we'll go ahead and paint the edge of the dough. And then whatever's left on the brush, we can go ahead and paint that on the lid. And we will carefully place that over, making sure it's perfectly centered, at which point we'll press that down, making sure we're getting a nice seal with the bottom dough. And as we're doing that, it's gonna be tempting to kind of tear off that excess dough, but try to avoid doing that because you might tear that top piece. And what we really want to do once that's sealed is go around with a small thin knife, cutting nice and cleanly right against the edge of the ramekin. And after all that, we should have a really good seal. But to hedge our bets and to give it a more decorative look, we will take a fork and we'll press that all the way around to give it a final crimping. And I know you've heard crimping ain't easy and some methods aren't, but this forking method really is a simple one. And that's it, once our dough's been crimped, we'll go ahead and brush the top with our egg wash, at which point we'll take the tip of our knife and make a vent hole right in the center. All right, not too big, but big enough where it doesn't close up as he's big. And that's gonna allow for some steam to escape so that the size of our crust on top don't rupture. And yes, because we overfilled this on purpose, some of that sauce towards the end of the baking time is definitely gonna bubble up out of this, but at least we know where it's gonna happen. And there's not going to be any surprises. So that one was looking pretty good. And then I did another one the same way and added it to the pan. And yes, you can make these ahead and bake them when you want. But either way, once you're ready, we will pop these into the center of a 400 degree oven for about an hour or until they're a beautiful golden brown and that sauce is bubbling up out of the top. And they hopefully look like this. Oh yeah, those look nice. And despite some of that sauce bubbling out, I regret overstuffing these not at all. 
and I'm going to transfer them onto this rack and let them rest for a few minutes. While the other two I also made finished baking, and once they were all cooked, I took a few pictures before transferring those onto a board to serve. And since we put holiday in the name, I decided to garnish with some rosemary sprigs, since that always looks very holiday-ish. And the great thing about this very user-friendly hot water crust is once these have sat for a little bit, we can actually lift them out of the ramekin and serve them like this. Although if we're gonna to try to eat it with our hands, this is still way too hot, so we need to let it sit until it's just warm or room temp. So in the meantime, let's grab one of these and we will serve that up and eat it traditional pot pie style, which means with a spoon while still potted. And that, my friends, on every level is just a magnificent pot pie, right? Despite doing everything the opposite way we're supposed to do when we make pie crust, our pastry is beautifully buttery and surprisingly tender and definitely moister than your typical pie crust, which yes, are flaky, but they're often dry. And as far as the flavor goes, since we used all the same ingredients, this is gonna taste like your classic pot pie, usually done with chicken, but because our ham has a higher level of seasoning and is just more flavorful in general, it makes sense that this filling is gonna be more flavorful, which it is. And even though it was super simple, if you don't feel like going through the trouble of making that ancient hot water crust pastry dough, feel free to use some ready-made store-bought pie crust or one of our many, many homemade pie dough recipes. But anyway, that's eating method number one. Best used when you want to enjoy these piping hot. But if you do let these cool down until that filling firms up, these are perfect for eating with your hand, ideally on some ski slope or sitting on a hayride singing Christmas carols. And yes, during warmer weather, these would be absolutely perfect for a picnic. But whether you eat these by hand on a blanket at the beach, or with a spoon piping hot at a fabulous holiday gathering, either way, these really are incredible and very easy, which is why I really do hope you give them a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, Enjoy.